Okay, we are back with part seven, and uh, I changed the camera position, and um, yeah, I did some stuff, uh, so it looks a little better, but uh, you know how to do it. Uh, I just thought that it would be a better position for this tutorial, and this tutorial is how to add like a player and pose it and stuff like that. So yeah, there's a couple different things about this, I guess. Um, so there's different rigs, and a rig is like the player, uh, it's like the model that you use that you can pose and do stuff like that, and there's like hundreds of them out there, um, I've even made some if you've seen my channel before, um, I have a Steve rig, um, FMR is a popular free one, um, stuff like that, so there's free ones, there's ones that you pay for, um, but I've been getting by with free ones and making my own. Uh, so, yeah, I might make a tutorial on how to make your own in the future, but for now, you can just use uh, free ones. So, yeah, this will probably be pretty short. Uh, so, first you need to get a rig, so you could just look up uh, Minecraft Steve Rig Cinema 4D on YouTube, and you'll get, like, a bunch of results. So, just download one of those. Um, if you're going to use a Steve Rig, I recommend FMR or MyRig, but um, I would say FMR comes first, actually, so... Uh, I have FMR here, so FMR5 is the latest one. Uh, there also is a edited version that is FMR6 here, but um, I'm just going to use 5. So um, usually all rigs are a lib4d file. Um, sometimes they are a .c4d file, and those can be a little more annoying to deal with. So if it is a .c4d file, what you want to do is go file... Uh, merge uh, there it is file merge and you want to get the c4d file uh, but fmr is a lib4d file so you can just take it and drag it into cinema 4d just like you did with the world and you'll have this so fmr5 so double click that and you'll see that it makes a new thing so this is the player so if you take it and you drag it up there you can see that it is a player. So I'm going to position it where I want it to. So I'm going to go inside the camera and I want him to stand on this thing. So I'm going to put him like there. So get out of the camera now and make sure that you do get out of the camera because if you accidentally move it and you're inside it, um, you can't really just undo it and then it'll put it back um, unless you keyframe it. But we'll go over keyframing later. So, here it is, so, uh, uh, he's looking this way, and I want him to look over this way, so I'm gonna take it, and I'm gonna rotate it, so, um, I really haven't gone over moving and tools, because I would think you would already know it, but just in case, rotation tools here, scale tools here, which I don't use much, and the move tools here, and this is the selector tool, so, um, the short key, or the shortcut for rotation is R, and uh, E is actually the move. So R and E, they're right next to each other. So you can just switch back and forth between the tools. So I'm going to do R and rotate it. And uh, let's say that you're not very good at getting it exactly on the number or you want or you don't want to spend the time like moving this like every few degrees to get exactly 90. What you could do is uh, you could move it a little bit and you see down here that this number changes. So it might not be the same for you, but um, left and right on in this world here, uh, so not really left and right, but moving around in this direction is on the H. So we can see that it's going up, or not up, it's going in negative numbers. So uh, we want this to be negative 90, and that would be straight. So circles... Um, Let's see, half a circle is 180, and then half of that is 90, so, um, yeah, 90. So, uh, if I wanted them to face this way, then this would be positive 90. You can see there's no negative anymore, so that would be positive. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be negative. Um, I have to put it negative, and uh, you can put this wherever you want. Um, so make sure that you have it positioned on the block or wherever you want, and there it is. So... You're probably like, this isn't my skin. How do I get my skin on there? So this 
if you click on this, uh, there's this all this stuff down here. Um, this is called user data, and what this does is it pretty much lets you customize it. And um, on here, some of the user data is actually on the face, like these uh, circle things. Uh, those control the eyebrows. But some of the other things, like skins and stuff, you control with uh, this stuff over here, user data. So, like, we have scale, um, you know, skin, uh, cape, uh, uh, some of the stuff, eye colors and stuff like that. So, I'm going to select my skin. So, there's skin and these three dots. So, I'm going to click on it. And I'm going to go do my Cinema 4D stuff folder. And I'm going to go to skins. And I'm going to select uh, Steve skin. So, let's see. This Steve does not have eyes. Uh, that's kind of important. Uh, if you want to use the eyes on here, the skin that you use can't have eyes. Like, if I were to put, uh, let's see, this skin on there, um, you can see that uh, these, well, hold on. Let me turn off the eyes, and you can see that the eyes on there are different from the eyes on here. So, if you wanted to use the eyes on the rig, so you can open and close them, you'd want to remove these eyes here. Um, so yeah, I'm going to set this to a different skin though. I want to use uh, just regular Steve skin. So uh, yeah, I just went in Photoshop and I like copied one of these colors and I just like drew over the eyes with a couple random colors and I there, it's done. So yeah, now it's Steve. Um, if you want to, you could select another skin, but I'm just going to leave it at Steve. Um, now it can pose them and stuff. So if you want Steve to have different colored eyes, you could drag this. Um, not all rigs have this, but um, and not all of them are gonna look the same either. They all are different. So, uh, but I think it looks fine like this. So now we probably want to pose them because standing like this isn't that exciting. Um, so I'm gonna pose them and I'm gonna make them like looking a certain direction. So I'm gonna have them looking up like this and uh, we could turn his body a little bit so yeah you can see what these things are for this rotates the body and this rotates the head and uh, this one's kinda weird but uh, it's, it's fun to use sometimes uh, and this also rotates the body and then we have the hand controls so this controls the hand or the arm I guess and yeah uh, this the mouth here uh, smile and frown and then open and close like that. So that's how you do that. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of controls in these. I'm not going to go over all of them unless I was making a rig video, but I'm not, and this isn't my rig. So yeah, so we're not going to see his face because he's looking this direction, not this direction. So um, I don't have to pose the face, but if uh, you could see his face, I would recommend posing these. So you could just select one of these and look up like that. So... Uh, next, I will do like the legs. So uh, standing straight up like that isn't that exciting. So I'm gonna move his legs a little bit like this, and then I'm just gonna take this and move it down. And you can see that they start to bend. Move this one back a little bit. Oh, that's moving it up. I don't know why it's doing that. Now it's not moving it up. All right. There we go. So oh, it's moving it up again. Yeah, you have to be careful what you select, I guess. Um, yeah, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. But yeah, you can use the arrows and you can use these things here. So, select this again. Move it down. And then I'll just take his... This zooming is out of control sometimes. Uh, I'll take his hands and I'll just move them up slightly like this. And there's a pretty basic pose. Um... And I think I'm going to add a sword, so uh, not all of them have it, but this rig does. So if I scroll down, uh, we can see that we have tools. So I'm going to go to, uh, let's see, sword. Let's do left, since he's facing the left. He's left-handed. Uh, the 1.9 update has left hand, so there we go. We're good. So sword left, I'm going to choose diamond. And now he has a sword in his hand, and there we go. So now if I render this out, you can see that it looks pretty good. So... I added a lens flare up here from the light tutorial and depth of field back there and I just moved the camera a little bit and I changed the light position so that's all I did from last time and you can see that 
the player is there. It's just taking a second to load. And yeah, you can put your own skin on this. Yeah, I'll just let this render out. But that is pretty much just posing a player. I thought I would add it. Um, so I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do for the next tutorial. Uh, there's probably a lot of things I could do. I could probably do keyframing next. I might do that. Not quite sure. Uh, so here it is. Uh, now it's putting depth of field on. And there we go. So there's the final thing. Um, so I would say that's pretty good. Uh, if you wanted to, you could delete these blocks, all the grass blocks, and replace them with 3D grass. So you could just look up like um, extruded grass or Minecraft block pack or something like that and do that. Um, so yeah, let's see. One more thing I will show you, just because I mentioned that thing. Um, yeah actually I'll say that for the next tutorial um, that is it for this one actually so there we go we pose the player you could add more like I have a whole folder here of like you know bunny car cow we could put all those in there if you wanted to and then I have my own rigs here that I've made so I have a bunch of uh, things like hoverboard Isaac KFC guy yeah uh, Minecraft pig and then I also have my rig here too so uh, that is pretty much it for this tutorial, and thanks for watching.